Hi, welcome to the third episode of Learning with Roseanne. In the last session, we looked at how to attract your black soldier flies from the environment, and we took the steps right through to when you'll bring them into the adult fly cage. In this episode, we will look at how to set up the adult fly cage and what that requires. Pay attention, it has lots of moving parts. Once your attractant is ready, you collect the larvae from there and you bring them into the adult fly cage. The adult fly cage is a place where the larvae is going to come into to being a fly. And the fly cages are going to form your adult fly colony. There's going to be a lot of flies in your adult fly cages. And for that reason, sometimes you're required to have licensing. In Kenya, you'll get it from the Kenya Wildlife Service, as that is the uh, licensing body that gives you the license to carry out this uh, kind of farming. The adult fly cage is about four feet uh, by three feet by three feet. This is the ideal di dimensions for uh, getting all the flies uh, flying at the optimum um, at the optimum space. More than this and you might be using too much space and less than this you might be squeezing them up in, in, in terms of space. Our setup is made of moving parts that enable you to assemble and disassemble at will. This enables you to set up your adult fly cages in whatever space that you might have. This being the lower net, the lower bed, it will require a net which we will dress up with and the rest of the bits also are used to make now the second bed. Easy peasy, Japanesey. <laughs> All right, and here it is advisable to get somebody who has got some height advantage. You get the idea. <laughs> Once the frame has been set up, the next step is to dress it up with the nets. The netting is where the adult fly cages, uh, is where the adult flies are gonna make their home for the next 10 or so days as they mate and give you the eggs. Uh, quite simple putting it together you essentially tie it onto the frame making sure that the mouth is uh, facing the front because this is where you're gonna be accessing all your activities inside the net these nets are made from locally available nets you can get them from um, the shop near you um, there are people in Kenya who are now making them and I'm sure it's going to be the case everywhere. Service providers for people who will be then stitching the nets. If you want, you can also get your own nets stitched in your, in your local. These are also available and they can be made uh, locally. The net fits squarely onto your frame and that maximizes the utilization of the space of the frame. Inside the net, you're going to put in your black soldier fly larvae, the ones that have started pupating, so that when they are emerging, they emerge from within the net. The adult hamatia net is now set up, and as you can see, it comprises of a mouth through which you access everything that is inside the net. And if you're keen, you can notice that inside the net we have flaps. It is designed this way, to ensure that the flies get a place to patch on once they have hatched and they are flying in there. Ideally, once they have uh, gotten in, you maintain them in as much as possible. You do not allow them to come out. And so this becomes a fully, um, you know, like an ecosystem. Everything that they would need needs to be in there. Once you've put your pre-pupae into the adult fly cage, 
you are essentially waiting for them to um, to emerge as flies. You want to create the cage and give it all the ideal conditions for the fly to thrive. The fly does not eat food, it subsists on a diet of water only. And so one of the key things that you need in your, in your cage is watering points. Here we use the ancient technology of wicks. You have a lunch box or any container that you can. You have some absorbent material like a towel or uh, something and you put it in the water and let the water uh, come up through the capillaries of the towel. This will make the towel wet, constantly wet, and the flies can come onto the towel and take their fill of water right there. You put in as many of these watering points as there are flies in the, in the cage. In our instance, we'll put in one. The second thing that you need to put in your adult fly cage is bait stations. Bait stations act to attract the adult flies to lay their eggs in one particular place so that it is easy for you to collect all the eggs. Absent the attractant and the bait, you will find that the adult flies, the female flies, can lay their eggs everywhere and anywhere. And so it becomes quite a task to try and figure out where the eggs of the BSF are. So the next most important thing in the adult fly cage is the bait station. So here we have the bait which essentially is your rotten stuff. Try and make sure that it is smelling as smelly as possible. And uh, once you've put the bait on the bait station, you put in what we call the eggies. And this is where the adult flies are going to lay their eggs on. Put as many as possible on top of the bait. The idea here being the smell will attract the fly and finding a conducive place for it to lay the eggs should lay all of its eggs there. Together with the eggies and the bait, we call this the bait station. This is another of the things that gets into your adult fly cages. And so we are more or less set. You have the pupae that are going to emerge anytime into adult flies. You have their source of livelihood, which is essentially water. And you have where they will lay their eggs once they start mating, so that you can then collect and start growing up your colony. Having put that in, then you can close up the mouth of your cage And wait for life to happen. Once we have set it up, we leave it for uh, up to six weeks for it to have all the larvae out. This is now the setup that we have. Some of these nets were set up pretty early and the labeling actually helps you keep track of when you expect uh, your nets to be decommissioned. And here we have a full unit. Um, the complete unit of the nets, together with the frame, goes for a, an upwards of about 12,000. Uh, 12, and uh, you notice that we have a shade on top of our crates, I mean on top of our frames. This became necessary because if you have a setup where there's a lot of heat, the flies do not uh, thrive in direct heat. They, they like a place that is cool with shade, but with plenty of light. And so we have uh, shade, you can use, uh, this is the greenhouse uh, material for providing shade. You can use plywood, you can be, become innovative in uh, ways of uh, ac accessing that. So these are now the cages that we have, each having um, a label. The older ones, you can notice them by virtue of being a little bit uh, more, having more fly related dirt. And the newer ones that have been set up, you can see them, they are a little bit uh, cleaner. So after six weeks, you decommission uh, the crate, remove the flies from inside. The dead ones, you put them aside and use them for bait and uh, clean the, the net in preparation for the next uh, lot that is going to be coming in. 
for these units that have already been set up, you notice that we have uh, containers at the bottom that have got some fluid. This is because this is really nutritious and high energy food for various things. You want to have this so that you can avoid ants coming up the, the, the rail and getting into your adult fly cages. A good uh, number of ants can easily finish for you your fly cages, which would be counterproductive. So a small container with water and a little bit of soap or, or uh, alternatively, you can also have uh, grease or used motor oil put in there. It serves the same purpose. So this has been your third uh, episode of Learn with Roseanne. Remember to do your homework and remember to hit the subscribe button. Next time, we will have a look at how to harvest the eggs from the adult fly cages and then start now rearing. They love it. Till then, toodles. <laughs>